Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Linear Functions, um, Lesson Number 7, Systems of Linear Equations, Homework Review, Part 1. And so we're starting with, in this case, it's going to be, uh, uh, we'll start with, in this case, our techniques for solving systems of two equations, and we're going to build up to three equations. All right, so again, if you uh, find this video helpful, we definitely appreciate it. Give it a like and leave any comments, questions in the uh, comment section below. So we begin with the thought in this case that when deciding which method to use to solve a system of equations, we must determine if the, que the question is set up to make one method easier to use than the other. So, because there are more than one method of solving. Our first question is going to be the sum of two numbers is 5 and the larger difference of the two numbers is 39. So let's we'll say, for example, we have the sum of two numbers, A and B, is 5, while the larger of the, dif of the, uh, the large difference of two numbers is 39. So we'll say A minus B equals 39. Now, I want to find the two numbers by setting up a system of two equations with two unknowns and solving algebraically. And so we set up our, our equations here. We don't, we, we don't know exactly what the, uh, the, what the numbers are, but we do know in this case that A, well, a and B, A probably the larger number, and B the quote, smaller number, add together to be 5, and the difference, which means subtraction, will give us a, pos a positive 39. So we see in this case, there's a particular technique we might want to use. If it looks like you can cancel out the variable by adding subtracting equations, then we should, would use the cancellation method, also known as the elimination method. One thing to look for is to see if the coefficients of the same variable are equal or opposite values. If so, then we use cancellation. Since the goal is to cancel out one of the variables to get one equation with one variable, you add the two equations if one of the variables has opposite coefficients. Very important. If one of the variables has opposite coefficients, so, you know, so either A has, uh, the A's both have the uh, opposite coefficients or the B's both have opposite coefficients. Okay? If one of the variables has the same coefficient for both equations, then we will subtract one equation from the other. Although we could also multiply one of the equations by negative one and add, because sometimes it's easier to do it that way. So the idea is that you're looking for which variable has the, have either equal coefficients or opposite coefficients. Well, we see in our problem here that the B values have opposite coefficients. And therefore, the best thing to do is to add downwards. So now we're going to add, and we get a plus a is 2a, while b plus negative b is 0. So these will just cancel out. Equal, in this case, 5 plus 39 is going to be 44. Now we divide both sides by 2. a equals 22. And so now we have one value. We will then have to solve for b using one of the other equations. So for example, we'll use the first one if a plus b equals 5. We'll substitute in the 22 for a to solve for b. And we find in this case we're going to subtract 22 from both sides to get b equal to, it looks like, negative 17. Okay? Now, how do we make sure that this is a, these are correct answers? Because we might make a mistake. I haven't known to make mistakes before. Well, we do a check. And we're going to check both equations here. We'll begin with the one we use, a plus b equals 5. And a check really means that we've had, we found our answers. And now all we're really going to do is to see whether or not the whether or not the uh, they work out. So you're plugging in values to confirm left side and right side equal each other. What we did in this here, this is not a check. When we solve for b, that's actually solving for a variable. When we have the values for our variables and plug in, that's called a check. And so now we have in this case, 22 plus negative 17. Does that equal to five? Well, yeah, that does equal to five. So five equals five and therefore that works out. Now we must check against the other equation. The other equation is a minus b 
equals 39. And so here, we plug in 22 and subtract neg 17. Does that equal to 39? Well, when we subtract a negative, same as adding a positive, use that keep change change. And so we now have 39 equals 39. This works out great. Okay, so our sol solution for number one will be in this case, A is 22 and B is set next 17. <clears throat> All right. Question number two. Find the intersection points of the two lines whose equations are shown below. So in this, in this question here, we're not going to be graphing the two uh, equation, two lines. We're going to actually try to solve it algebraically. <clears throat> we notice that one of the variables for one of the equations is isolated by itself. We have y equals 6x minus 8. And the other equation is 4x plus 3y equals negative 13. Now, we definitely could, if we want to, move the 6x to the left side and try to use our method of, uh, of cancellation to solve, but it wouldn't work out so nicely. However, we do know that in this situation, y is equal to 6x minus 8. And so now, is one variable already solved with one of the equations? If so, then the best method may be to use substitution. The variable that's already solved for will be replaced in the other equation with the expression is equal to. So instead of trying to cancel out one of the variables by using adding additional subtraction, we're going to substitute, right? Replace in this case one variable with an expression. So here, since y equals 6x minus 8, we're going to plug in that value here into the first equation. So we're going to get 4x plus, and now instead of 3y, we'll have 3 times 6x minus 8, and that will equal to neg 13. Here we have one now, one equation with one variable, which is the goal. Always to get one equation with one variable. We'll distribute the 3 to get 4x plus 18x minus 24 equals neg 13. We combine like terms, we get 22x minus 24 equals neg 13. We're going to add 24 to both sides. And we're going to get here 22x is equal to now 24 minus 13 will be 11. Divide both sides by 22 x is equal to one half. So now we found one variable x. We can use, we can now plug this back into one of the equations. And probably the best one would be y equals six x minus eight. Reason it would be because y is always by itself. And so since y is equal to six times x, which is we find to be one half minus eight, we're gonna get y is equal to three minus eight or negative 5. So here, the point and intersection will be x is 1 half, y equals negative 5. Our point and intersection will be 1 half, comma, negative 5. This is our point of intersection. Okay? Now, there are times when none of the coefficients are equal or opposite of each other. So, you know, when we do when we do our situation with uh, or with cancellation or the elimination method, we find in this case we have to maybe find the least common multiple. So when that happens, we have to pick the variable we want to get rid of and then find the least common multiple of the coefficients and multiply each equation by the coefficient or its opposite of the other equation. And I have an example here. Now, what does this mean? Well, we have 3x plus 5y equals 37 and 4x plus 2y equals 26. I sort of kind of came up with this. Um, this is not part of the homework, but this sort of go over situations where we have a uh, system of equations that looks like this. 
Well, let's pick a value. Which value should we get rid of? Uh, let's so let's say in this case, we want to undo or get rid of the x value. So I notice in this case that the x's have a 3 and a 4. So the least common multiple between 3 and 4 is going to be 12. Now, why is it helpful? We're going to end up multiplying the first equation by the number that would give us a 12x for 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 that expression so we're going to multiply the first equation by four now for the second equation the number that multiplies 4x to get 12x will be three and so we multiply the entire thing by three except here's the thing since they both are positive values. We'll have to subtract later on anyway. So maybe instead of multiplying by 3, we're going to multiply by negative 3. And again, why negative 3? So that we'll be able to have the first equation with a positive 12x and the second equation with a negative 12x. So we distribute, and we're going to get, in this case, 12x plus 20y is equal to now 4 times 37 is 120 plus 28, which makes it 148. We multiply neg 3 for both sides of the second equation, and we'll get neg 12x minus 6y is equal to 26 times 3 is going to be 60 plus 18 is going to be 78, but negative 78. Okay. And now we add downwards. And by adding downwards, we'll see in this case the 12x's will cancel out. 20y plus neg 6y gives me 14y. And in this case, we'll get 148 minus 78 should give us 70. If we divide both sides by 14, y should equal to 5. So the goal was to come up with the come up with two equations where they where we can cancel out one of the variables. Here we multiply the top one by positive, the, multiply the top equation by positive 4 and the bottom equation by negative 3. And now we will plug in y for one of the equations. In this case, it'll be, we'll pick the first one, 3x plus 5 times 5 equals 37. So we get 3x plus 25 equals 37. Subtract 25 on both sides. We get 3x is equal to 12, divide both sides by 3, x equals 4. So x equals 4 and y equals 5 for as a solution for the system of equations. But the most important thing is when we cannot cancel out right away, we can come up with a method of multiplying one equation by one, one value, the second equation by another value, so that we can have one of the variables to have opposite coefficients so we can cancel them out. Okay? So hopefully this method of this approach will help us later on with more complex, more challenging situations where we have linear equations to solve. This will be the end of our home review part one. I hope you guys have found the video helpful. And if you found it helpful, please give it a like. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be alerted and, you know, learn when new videos are added to the, to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care and be safe.